Update 112 has been on test servers for about 10 days, and although we talked about it in the dev summary, there are a few surprises in this update that the notes didn't mention. I've gotten some hours under my belt, and I have some thoughts, mostly good, but some concerns as well. Just to get it out of the way, we should be seeing it on live servers next week, based on the announced questline dates. Of course, that is subject to change, but you know, that is the projection. So, console players or PC gamers with limited hard drive space, give it like a week or two. I've played with the new weapons and overall I'd say the additions are really nice. Update 112 adds the Centennial Shorty, the Shorty Silencer, the Crag Bayonet, the Crag Sniper, and readjusts the sights of the Lamat Carbine. Also, the Poison and Choke Clouds on the Hand Crossbow are now a bit larger. Something I love about getting a new update is it explains some of the actions taken in previous updates, so in this case, thinking about the fire rate and animation improvements for the Centennial, it now makes sense why that weapon received so much love, in part to make the Shorty and the Shorty Silencer more viable medium slot picks. Full disclosure, most of my playtime has been with the Shorties, and I've really enjoyed them. They do make interesting combinations with other weapons, but they are also very fun to pair together. And there aren't many two-slot weapons I would classify as fun, but the Shorty Silencer certainly is and fills an interesting niche that the Obrez or the Winfield don't quite cover. And while I think bow enjoyers will still prefer the bow for its one-hit kill potential, the Centennial Shorty is a good range pairing for that, or the medium shotguns for anyone not using Quartermaster or wanting to pay a premium for the Obras. The Crag variants are a little less interesting to me. I mean, they're good content, still a cool weapon, but it does feel like just another Crag. Sniper players might enjoy the Sniper, the Bayonet is a nice backup option for close fights, and the shifting solo meta, which we will talk about in a second. It's the crag, what can I say? And finally, the Lamat carbine sights have been fixed, so they should be accurate at range. Not a huge change, but a welcome one. On to other key features, this update brought a new scripted tutorial. I did a video this week with my girlfriend where she went through it, and then we tried to play a few matches together, and I think that went pretty well, all things considered. The video will be in the pinned comment. She has enjoyed reading all your pleasant feedback. There are some interesting possibilities that the tutorial introduces, like maybe deployable dummies, or team voice chat through VoIP for anyone that uses random lobbies. Crytek hasn't confirmed any of that or even teased it, it's just stuff that's in the tutorial that kind of makes you wonder. And if you haven't collected those blood bond rewards for the old tutorial, I recommend you do that because those blood bonds are just sitting there. Also added in the update is the return of solo necro revive and other solo perk changes. So now solo players running necromancer can revive themselves after 10 seconds. With magpie they can hold 10 seconds of dark sight boost and loot 2 seconds from bodies and with serpent they can steal clues and bounties from 50 <laughs> meters away up from 25. I have played in trios and solos and can say that while I don't think solo revives are broken, there might be some tweaks to it in the future. If you're in a trio, usually someone has something they can use to either burn a body or trap it, but there are times when you get caught out in the open and you just have to camp the body. I was playing solo and got in a lengthy standoff with another solo player where eventually I was able to go the distance to get a lamp, but it was a very frustrating exchange and I just extracted after that standoff because it took the enjoyment out of that round. So I just want to say anyone worried about the solo revive problem, give Crytek your feedback as constructive as you can and it is more likely to be followed. But also, anyone that hasn't played the update yet, I would just wait for it to hit live servers before you make up your mind. The meta in the test server is not at all like it is in live servers, and I think the community as a whole just needs to make the adjustment before it decides what changes solo play needs. I thought about doing a guide to counter solo players, and let me know if you want to see that. One thing I think every player will like is the new damage log when you die. You see incoming and outgoing damage for the 30 seconds leading up to your death. It's a really nice feature, and while you may not always agree that you should have died, at least you can see why the server thinks you did. I haven't had too many bugs with this, but the devs said they are rolling it out in beta form, so there's probably a cleaner experience on the way. I do wish you could see this data at the post-match details, but I'm okay if they leave it how it is too. I'm sure that's a lot of work to put it in both menus. Another big change in this update is the removal of the left peak advantage, so the camera has been adjusted to be more central. And I will say, it seems like a small change, but you can really feel it 
and now peeking on your right is viable. It does take some relearning of the hunt muscle memory to do, but that's okay. It also counts as a small buff to the iron side and the alamo in my opinion, so if you've been avoiding those weapons, they might be worth a second look. We also got our first look at the new quest lines coming to the game, and there aren't too many surprises in here. You get a few quests for each of the acts, you collect the thing, find the thing, shoot the thing, and you get a reward. One of those quest items are these gator traps, and they look very cool, and maybe tee up what's coming in the future. The rewards are also nice looking, some great skins. I'm curious how people will feel about the art direction on these, but I think they look good, and are on theme for the gatorish quest line. With the new Bloodbond skins, the Wormbite, the Skinned, the Scaled Ward, and the Hornback all join the roster with this update. I've been trying to pay attention to the lore a bit more, and there are definitely some factions forming, so check those out if you want to see a little preview of what was discussed in the roadmap about the end of the American Hunter Association. Did I mention the reload bug is fixed? I haven't experienced it at all on any weapon across a variety of arsenals, and while that's worth celebrating, it also sucks to say that there's a new bug where thrown items just disappear. Chokes, grenades, flares, whatever, gone from the world as if you never even tried. And related to that, or a separate bug, I'm not sure, medkit charges disappear and don't get used. Those seem like crucial fixes before the update hits live servers. I doubt they will be as widespread and lasting as the reload bug, but they are very annoying. I don't want to end on a bad note, so let's talk about some things that were pleasantly surprising with this update. Number one being the huge, massive fix for the UI where legendary skins are now selectable and equipable with these arrows. It is so much better and cleaner and a welcome change. Also on the topic of menu UI, choosing a team also looks a bit cleaner. Small change, but a nice one. And in addition to that, the menu lighting in general just feels much nicer. It is way less like fluorescent grocery store lighting and a more cinematic warm glow, which applies to the gun preview as well. It just makes the menu feel more inviting, and that's a good thing, I would say. Also, we got the introduction of the new saddlebags and saddled horses. I haven't had one come in clutch yet, but they are cool to see, and I think it's a logical addition, so kudos to the team there. The wildcard contracts were kind of iffy on the test server. It was hard to queue into a full one, but I did get to experience them. And yeah, they totally work. It was really great being able to plan for a night map, and I hope the player numbers justify keeping the night contracts in the future, or whatever those wildcard contracts will be. So, that covers just about all the features you should see in update 112. Overall, I would say it's a really great update. I'm a little concerned about solo play slowing the game down for teams without a way to burn a body. But I have a few recommendations to make sure that doesn't happen, which I think I'll put into a video. Players should wait to make up their minds about it though, and Crytek should act on the data and sentiment as they see it unfold. Also recently I did the 10 problems and hunt video and some people thought that was ill-timed given the changes in this update, but I feel like it was just on time. You can clearly see the progress comparing that video to update 112. There are some acts of hard work being poured into this update, although I'm scared of what major bug we haven't found yet. I already talked about the throwables one, but I think previous updates just have me a little gun shy. Hopefully 112 can come to both platforms clean and ready, but only time will tell. Anyway, that is my thoughts and experiences with this update but be sure to tell me yours. Have you tried update 112? Are you nervous about solo revive? Let me know in the comments below and maybe someone at Crytek will see it. If you like the video, you can like it. If you're new, you can subscribe. And until the next video, goodbye.